Instagram hug. This is the dice. And if you live near a lake in Ireland, there's probably a monster in it. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, the timeline's fucking bollocks, I'm trying to sort it out there. Will you shut up? I'm working on it! Right, give that a go, see what happens. The subject of this Irish folklore video was chosen by my patrons on Patreon. You can help vote to decide what kind of content I make by signing up for as little as one dollar a month. Lakes hold a very special place in Irish folklore and mythology. They are often seen as gateways into the other world, as the resting places of tragic heroes and the hiding places of great treasures. They are also even often the site of discovery for many important archaeological finds. Now we'll be talking about all of those things in future videos, but we're going to touch on all of them just a little bit here as we talk about the most common folktale motif that is associated with lakes in Ireland, the lake monster. Lake monsters serve many different roles in the various stories in which they are included. Sometimes they are a representation of the dangers of nature and wild animals. Sometimes they are guardians, protectors of the lake or something in the lake. Occasionally a lake monster is a pet or a pawn of some obscure villainous figure. And sometimes, lake monsters are a direct consequence of some human's foolish actions. For the sake of convenience, I'll be separating Ireland's lake monsters into three broad categories. Number one, lake guardians, probably the broadest of the three categories. It has an awful lot of crossover with the other two, and the other two can, of course, be lake guardians sometimes. Number two, Pacht, perhaps the most common of Ireland's lake monsters, huge, sinuous, worm-like creatures. And number three, water horses, which is fairly self-explanatory. Part one, Lake Guardians. This is the broadest of the three categories of lake monster. Now, some lake guardians are protecting the lake itself as an extension of their territory. Some are protecting a gateway to the other world. Some are protecting another creature that lives within the lake. Some are ghosts protecting the place where they died or where their body is. And some are a variation on the treasure guardian motif. Creatures that guard the lake itself are the most varied variety and also the most common. Any kind of lake monster can be this kind of lake guardian. Now, as I said, when lake guardians are protecting a treasure within the lake, they are a variant of the treasure guardian motif. In the treasure guardian motif, what has happened is that a member of an ancient race usually either the Tua de Danon or the Vikings, has hidden a treasure in a hill or in a valley or under a standing stone or in some woods, etc, etc. And there is a creature, usually either a bull, a dog, a horse, a cat or a bird, protecting that treasure. Now, the treasure itself is very rarely directly cursed, but it is said that some form of misfortune will fall on anyone who tries to get that treasure. One of the forms that misfortune can take is that the person trying to take the treasure will be attacked by the treasure guardian. Now, in instances where the treasure is hidden in or near a lake, we have a lake guardian. Like their land equivalent, 
Creatures that guard treasure in lakes can be a bird, a cat, a dog, a bull or a horse. But within the lake they could also be a page. Which brings us to our next section. Part 2. Paged. The word paged means worm, and much like the Anglo-Saxon worm, it applies equally to creatures such as earthworms, caterpillars, tapeworms, and maggots, as it would to huge, monstrous mythological worms. Though the Irish language does make a very, very slight attempt to distinguish them through the word ulfeisht, which means giant worm. Though this lack of distinction may be justified. In stories from Ireland, Scotland, the north of England and Scandinavia, there are many times where a caterpillar, an earthworm, a maggot, a tapeworm will be slighted, insulted or otherwise abused by a human and then turn into a huge, monstrous worm. A fellow YouTuber, Philosophy Tube, referenced just such a story in his video titled Queer. In this video, he tells the story of the Lamptum Worm, which is commonly told in Durham, in the north of England. Now, this story is very, very similar to a much older story told in Ireland about Fionn McCool. And both are excellent examples of this tale type. Paged are both the most common kind of lake monster in Irish folklore and also the most varied. They can appear to be an unusually long eel of average thickness or they can be huge monstrous eels almost as long as the lake that they live in with a head the size of a horse's. They can vary from being violent and vicious and destructive to being cunning and tricky. There's even one page that takes its tail in its mouth to turn itself into a wheel and roll between various bodies of water, leaving a track of dead grass in its wake. Upsetting or offending a page is generally thought of to be a very bad idea. Of course, the huge, gigantic ones could just eat you where you stand. And the small, tiny ones might, after a few years, turn into one of the huge, gigantic ones and then eat you several years later. But the medium-sized ones, fairly average-sized ones, hurting one of them might bring you misfortune. Not quite a curse laid on you, but it will bring you bad luck and maybe sickness. Or they might find some other more subtle way to take their revenge on you. Occasionally, paged are described as coiling themselves around hills or buildings. But usually they are a water-dwelling creature. Even the very tiny ones that would start off as land-dwelling generally end up as water dwelling by the time they reach their full size. Even the most unusual page, the three that lived in the heart of Mish, the son of the Morrigan, ended up living in the water. After Mish was slain by Dian Kecht, the three page emerged from his corpse and went to live in the river Barrow. Part 3. Water Horses Now these are very similar to Scottish Kelpies, except here in Ireland they are referred to as either water horses, magic horses or fairy horses. Now that last title in particular makes an awful lot of sense, considering that in Irish folklore Lakes and other bodies of water are strongly associated with the other world and are often seen as doorways into the other world. Water horses are usually described as being somewhat smaller and more slight than land horses. They are usually coloured either red and black or red and white, though they have been described as being other colours as well. They usually have long, 
thin ears with a long thin tail and long thin legs. Water horses are often described as having somewhat aquatic features. Some may be said to have a mane like a fish's fin or to have a fish tail instead of a horse's tail. Some are even described as having a fish tail instead of their rear legs and back end. Now, despite usually being somewhat smaller than ordinary horses, they are usually described as being much stronger and faster and capable of doing much more work much more quickly. Now, there's two main types of stories featuring water horses. One is a fairly standard Lake Guardian story in which someone encroaches upon the creature's territory or tries to steal a treasure that it is protecting and the water horse doesn't like it. Now the other goes as follows. A poor farmer needs to do work on the farm and either he can't afford a horse in the first place or he can't afford the number of horses that he needs to do the work. The farmer then either goes out looking for a horse he can borrow and finding the water horse grazing by a lakeside on his way or the water horse just suddenly turns up on his land. The farmer will then use the water horse to get the work done on the farm. It will be done much faster and more efficiently than it has been done with just using land horses. Then Either the farmer will bring the horse to a river or a lake to get a drink or the farmer will forget the rules that are supposed to apply when dealing with water horses and strike the horse with a whip or other implement. And then the water horse will leap into the nearest body of water to return to the lake. Now in either instance, the water horse will not wait for any rider to dismount before jumping into the water. But if the story has ended the first way, where the farmer just brings the water horse to get a drink, then the rider will usually jump off the back of the horse before it jumps into the lake or will swim back to shore and be safe. But if it ends the second way, where the farmer has struck the horse and the rider usually drowns and is sometimes devoured. Now the rider of the horse might be the farmer themselves or it might be someone dear to the farmer such as a child or a spouse. Now if you feel now if you feel the narrative of a poor farmer receiving help from another world figure that has risen from a lake and then being punished by that other world figure when the farmer betrays them is oddly reminiscent of the story of the curse of Maka you're not the only one Maka is, of course, a figure that is very much associated with horses. And as an otherworld figure herself, who did rise up out of a lake, it makes sense that she'd be tied to creatures who come from the other world out of lakes. It could very well be that the prevalence of water horse stories is in fact a continuation or a spreading of the story of Maka. Part 4. Just when you thought it wasn't safe to go back into the water. Ireland's folklore has always had a strong tendency to associate the natural and the supernatural. Blurring the lines between the two to a point of near imperceptibility. Which explains why, for the most part, lake monster stories rarely tend to stray that far beyond the realms of the possible. It often comes down to, oh no, a animal is attacking me in the water. And when you consider the fact 
that dogs, bulls and horses are all quite strong swimmers and that herons and geese exist. A lot of lake monster stories probably just come down to the fact that people were taken by surprise by one of these animals suddenly bursting out of the water. As for paged, dead livestock by the shores of rivers and lakes have often been found with lamprey eels latched onto and wrapped around them. And when you consider the fact that lamprey eels drink blood and look like this, that makes an awful lot of sense. It's not very hard to turn that into a monster. In fact, it's actually quite easy. Thank you for watching this video on lake monsters in Irish folklore. Also a special thank you to the mighty Ashcarp, first of her name, Keeper of the Magic Carp and Empress of the Great Shiny Sea, Queequeg, and my other patrons whose names you see scrolling across the screen within the screen as I speak. I would also like to thank my wonderful, beautiful wife, Red, also known as Firestarter, both here and on her website, for guesting as alternate universe hog at the start of the video. Patrons will be getting to see the full video of Red reciting the entire script, as well as bloopers. If you want to help with the channel and help me keep doing the work that I do, you can pledge to my Patreon for as low as one euro now that Patreon's letting me do that a month. Or you can make a donation to my Ko-fi, buy some of my merch on my Society6, or likes, shares, comments, subscriptions, all the stuff down in the description box. Any of that is also extremely helpful. And do remember that your applause is the only way to counteract my daily chant of I don't believe in fairies. <laughs>